So let's get into the Battlefield 5 uh, ray tracing alpha footage. Um, there's mirrors of it now, I think, that what I found earlier today was okay. it. Um, so yeah, there's footage of it. It's like a 20-minute demo, the one that I watched at least. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it's a pretty good lengthy demo. Um, yeah, it's uh, running at 1080p, very stuttery. Uh, sounds like it's running on a 2080 Ti. We can assume. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what else settings. would they probably even use, yeah. right? You know, like well, if you're gonna, if there's gonna be any footage of it, it's mostly gonna be done on a 2080. Ti. They're probably not capping I, anything. I from would a 2080. agree, except that we're seeing 2080s um, leak benchmarks. That's well, true. Well, not just that, but 2080s are coming out sooner. It looks like 2080s might be getting seeded sooner. Okay, okay, that could be. So we could be seeing leaks yeah. from AIBs and stuff like that, even, yeah. potentially. Uh, and, and we'll show you some of the footage here, guys, if we if we can find a proper mirror of it that yeah. isn't completely horrible. But uh, a lot of them are really compressed and just don't look that great. Uh, and, I mean... Again, this is one of those things where, especially with how compressed these videos have been, it's not a good representation of what the game is going to look like when you play it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially because you can never really get the full example of what a game looks like over a stream or a recording or anything of the sort. Mm -hmm. You've really got to got to play it yourself to understand what it looks like, and it's always going to look worse if it's in any kind of compressed format or generally any kind of recorded format, even good display capture yeah. and stuff. Uh, and it's especially going to look worse with hand cam footage. I've seen people making big judgments oh. based off of hand cam footage. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Uh, and, and so uh, what I wanted to mention here is I got I watched some of it before the main good quality video was ripped off YouTube, was still taken down from YouTube. I got to watch about five minutes of it, uh, and then I was busy doing other stuff, so I didn't end up continuing from there. Uh, and, and to be completely honest, you know, it didn't look that much better. The lighting was clearly better in specific scenes. Uh, darker scenes were a little bit more obvious uh, that it, there was ray tracing mm -hmm. going on. The, you know, the lighting looked good. Uh, reflections off water, albeit they actually looked unrealistic, but that's because they were going overboard. That can be fine-tuned, of course. Uh, reflections off water and cars and stuff like that was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very, very good looking. Uh, and I think that was the, the part where it really stood out like, oh, this is definitely ray tracing, whereas so you didn't know what ray tracing was and you were they were put side to side you would say this looks better but it's not that much different even though it's a completely different technology mm -hmm. um and, and a little note i put it in here kind is, of completely different because it is hybrid okay yeah yeah right which we're gonna see that at least for a while we're going yeah. to see hybrid ray, you know rasterization and ray tracing put together in a game for lighting um and something i also wanted to note was i felt like hdr kind of makes a bigger difference so, yeah, sorry, quick cut there, guys. But, yeah, what I was saying is I, I feel like HDR makes a bigger difference than ray tracing in terms of, of game fidelity if you can get it working and if you've seen it in person. And, of course, HDR is a lot of the effect you get is better lighting, right? Because you see mm -hmm. lighting looks more vibrant. And I feel like, to me at least, seeing, like, you know, a street light and looking at it and actually having it be bright and, like, almost hurt your eyes to look at it like it would in real life, that, to me, you know, and it's just a contrast. It's not necessarily that it's actually mm -hmm. bright enough to damage your eyes but just the, the super increased contrast that you get from that where it's so much more vibrant looks more realistic than just some better reflections off water or something. But, uh, of course, you know, that's not... Um, well, there's two problems there. Is HDR's garbage on Windows. But second is we're seeing the beginning of ray tracing. It's alpha footage. Third problem, HDR is a standard as garbage. Yeah, yeah. So HDR right now is so convoluted that it's like, is ray tracing going to be less convoluted than HDR? Ray tracing will probably, at least at the PC level, be consistent and market ready before HDR. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like right That's now I have sad. yeah I have an HDR capable display. You guys, uh, you might if you look on the channel, you see an unboxing of it. I have a review coming up, but uh, you know it's it's not necessarily like full like 1000 nit HDR or anything like that. But you know when I turned on HDR, if I could get it functional on content that was HDR, it looked great. But anything that wasn't HDR specific content, including mm -hmm. the Windows desktop. Horrible. Witcher looked like garbage, mm. right? Things like that. Where and and you could toggle it on and off, and sometimes it would fix things, sometimes it wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely insane. I would be watching like HDR video footage on YouTube, and sometimes it would look absolutely flawless and perfect, and other times mm. I'm like, it looks like a washed out piece of garbage just from toggling it on and off. So yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to note to people, I guess that that you know ray tracing. Don't expect it to be this revolution in terms of how game fidelity looks. There's a lot of other uh, uh, different advantages that come from it uh you get better reflections and shadows which are two big things mm -hmm. right there but you also get uh it's easier for the devs to work with once we finally get it so you're not having to develop both rasterization and ray yeah. tracing 
or even when you get to the point where you can cut out a lot of the dev time that goes into some of the rasterization tricks, if right. you can use the ray tracing for things like global illumination, then that cuts out a lot of what you have to do. Right, right. Especially, you know, and so like for now, I guess what I, what I meant by until you cut out rasterization or, and yeah. both being needed is for the same given light source, right? Because yeah. right now for consoles, for AMD, and for anybody that's not on a 20 series card, so that would have been easier to say, uh, it, it's, you know, you have to develop the rasterization tech, otherwise it's going to be unplayable, yes. right? So they're, they're doing double duty in these cases, and NVIDIA is, of course, subsidizing a lot of that, I would mm -hmm. assume. Um, but it was just interesting to see some of that. Like I said, I'll try and get some footage that we show up there for you guys. Uh, you know, if we, if we don't, and we couldn't find anything that looked yeah. halfway decent. So, yeah. um, just in general, something to keep in mind for ray tracing, both for now and for going forward, and what we see it get adopted to. It's it's far more complicated, both as a tech and both as a benefit than most people make it out to be. Yeah, it's not yeah. just about lighting. Uh, it's about development in general. Um, and we won't and, see and the in terms fruits of, of that for a long time. And in terms of like effects of how things look, like I said, reflections mm -hmm. and shadows are more important than just how well the lighting is distributed on the brick floor that you're walking across, right? Yeah. It's it's the differences where you get you know a little puddle on the ground that is reflecting light in different directions, mm -hmm. and and you know you're wearing your player's wearing a watch, and as they move that watch up. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to see exactly what the light's doing like it would in real life. And yeah. if we can combine that with HDR, mm -hmm. that's when we'll see the real big differences. Whereas I can imagine a situation where you have a side-by-side -side comparison, both perfectly imagine if it was perfect HDR displays, ray tracing on versus off. It would be much more prevalent and mm -hmm. obvious how much better ray tracing is in that situation versus a non-HDR display. Yeah. Um, also, though, for games like... Um I mean, for any game, really, but for games like Cyberpunk, where you have so many different colors going on, um, one of the other things with ray tracing is that you can get a better merging of different colored of light sources. Yeah. And so when you have neon lights within Cyberpunk, if you can have that blue and that purple properly merge and you have an HDR display, yeah. that's going to make so much of a difference because you get the... You get more color. That's one of the benefits of HDR from a gaming perspective. Yeah, and that's one of the benefits. More colors available. Yeah. And so if you can get those colors to merge and utilize that color space, that'll make a huge difference. Exactly. That's something that people don't really think about. It's like it's like 10 bit versus 8 bit displays, and then the HDR is kind of including that into mm -hmm. it. Like my display is a 10 bit. It's an 8 bit plus FRC. I'm not going to get into what that is, but uh, y there is a visible difference in the color accuracy mm -hmm. and and how vibrant the colors are and whatnot it, ver on an, a 10 bit versus an 8-bit panel, and HDR helps bring some of that out. So HDR also isn't just about brightness, unlike yeah. what some people have been led to assume with all the people that say you need a 1,000 nits for good HDR, mm -hmm. which the truth is you don't. There's different aspects of, of measuring nits in different yeah. different areas of the screen, how long they have to maintain the brightnesses. Yeah. And, so. and this goes back to HDR being such a complicated standard because HDR for photography is just contrast. It's just dynamic range as, as what it says. Yeah, yeah. Whereas HDR for gaming and video is uh, as part of the standard now it's color depth it's brightness it's contrast it's all by the basis things. standard we should yeah. say yeah what they what they've uh, you know classified as it and uh, also i wanted to mention something that daniel and i both i think agree on here is ray tracing tech is going to be much more important in a single player based game mm. and so when like shadow of the tomb raider comes out and the ray tracing is actually polished in it versus battlefield it's going to be a much bigger deal because you play those games and those are the games that i prefer and you you play those for the immersive experience mm -hmm. not for the fast-paced action stress level experience right yeah. And so, you know, in Battlefield, you know, things like that don't make as big of a difference. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, oh, cool, the puddle reflects nicely, but you're not going to pay as much attention to that. Whereas there are, you know, given moments in a lot of single-player games like Witcher and Tomb Raider where you stop and you just go, I just want to look at the scene for a moment and yeah. see how pretty this is. You don't have time to do that in but a even, fast But even beyond game. that, when we, when we finally reach the point where ray tracing is the primary display method, um, assuming that consoles get ray tracing which would be the thing required for eventually that, to that will happen. probably happen too um assuming we get that then games can be designed around ray tracing and we'll get environments that are better for that yeah and we'll get advantages in fps games mm -hmm. as an example battlefield like games where reflections might be a bigger advantage of using vehicles to see around corners mm -hmm. right and that is actually a little bit of a concern that came to my mind uh in a competitive game is people that don't have ray tracing might be at a disadvantage in those scenarios. So mm -hmm. if it's a highly competitive game, this is why games like CSGO tend to stick to the same thing for so long and like Overwatch tend to stick to the same thing in terms of graphics and stuff like that for so long 
is Ultroid. It, it, right, yeah, but it can mess with the the competitiveness mm-hmm. of the game, right? Yeah, um, and I mean they can easily make it so that for tournaments you can't have that. Yeah, or they could do that, which would make more sense. Or like, uh, or you you'd have it so that like the game, the graphic settings adjust when you go into competitive mode, mm-hmm. right? So like on Overwatch, for example, they should allow quick play to have the full field of view from an ultra wide rather than cropping it. But then when you click competitive, it just shoots it right down to standard sixteen by nine, so everybody's in an equal scenario. Um, or they could just give you twenty one by nine and let the field of view cap out at a certain field of view. So you can still get that field of view on sixteen by nine. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Instead of yeah. punishing people for using twenty one by nine, which is what they currently do, because they cut off your vertical field of view. Yeah, if you set it in twenty one by nine mode, otherwise you're cropped in with black bars to standard sixteen by nine. Yeah, horrible. It's really dumb.